You're listening to High School Football on ESPN Radio 1017 The Team. Let's get back to the stadium with Mike Roberts and David Williams. Let's go down to the sideline of Marcus Jaramillo. Uh, Marcus? All righty, I'm here with Coach Dawson, El Dorado head football coach. Coach, not having a rushing attack today. Can you speak on the play of your sophomore quarterback, Zach Gentry? You know, it's always hard whenever you're kind of in a spread. you got to be able to. But, you know, he had two rushing touchdowns, I believe, and that was huge. And it's always a threat, so they have to, they have to cover the run with the quarterback. Alex Ostrom, he made some big plays today. I, I know Alex from when he was just a freshman. Can you speak on the growth of him and what he means to your team? I think it's the, uh, he's the most uh, underestimated player in the state. I don't want to... I don't want Cruces and Clovis to hear that, but he made a lot of plays. He's a good jumper and good leaper, and he just makes plays when we need it for him to make plays. Your defense, they were pinning their ears back and going at him today. Was that the game plan, or did you guys feed off the lack of offense from La Cueva? Well, I think, you know, whenever they're off, they're off for two weeks, and that's tough. I think sometimes your continuity on offense isn't always there, and we knew that, and we were going to be able to get after him a little bit, um, and that's what we did. You know, you get a lead, and, and La Cueva's not, you know, they're traditionally a run team, so. And Coach Lassley, you guys had a great turnout in the crowd today. What does that mean to your players and to you and your program as you guys move forward? Being an Eagle, it's awesome. You know, to play your rival in the quarterfinals, I feel bad for Coach Lucero. They had a great year, 9-2, nine and, nine and two, but had a great year. I'm just so happy for the community in El Dorado and everybody that came out. We want to thank them. And hopefully, hopefully if we play Cruces, they'll come back out here. If not, we've got to go to Clovis. Okay. But we're happy as can be. Okay. All right, Coach Johnson, thank you for your time. Mike and Coach, back up to you guys. All right, thank you, Marcus. Do you have a question for Marcus? Well, Cruces would be here if they if they win if they play El Dorado and if El Dorado plays Clovis it would be in Clovis. Is that a is that true, Marcus? Um, judging from the time that I was at El Dorado last time Luis Cruces played, we were down there right. and El Dorado uh, was up here for Clovis, so that is correct. They would be traveling to Clovis and Las Cruces would be coming here. Okay. All right, All right. thank you, Marcus. Marcus uh, Jaramillo down on the field talking to Charlie Dotson, the victorious coach as El Dorado wins here today by a score of 21 to 7. Your New Mexico owned and operated station, ESPN Radio 1017, the team, KQTM FM, Rio Rancho Albuquerque. We are back here at Wilson Stadium. El Dorado leads it 14 to seven over La Cueva Bears here in this 5A quarterfinal game. I'm joined here in the booth by Coach David Williams and Marcus Jaramillo. And guys, it's been kind of a shaky first half. It seems like both teams, uh, like you've said earlier, playing their first game of the season. Maybe that bye week shook La Cueva a little bit. For El Dorado quarterback Zach Gentry, he's eight of eight for 17. 161 yards, a touchdown. He also has a 13-yard touchdown run. Marcus, what is what is Zach seeing right now? What, is, what does he see in the defense that's allowing him to put up some gaudy numbers? You know, he's getting guys running across the middle. Tobin Brazier, for one example, he ran for, I think, 67 yards on his uh, cross-the-middle uh, passing route. And other than that, you know, when Zach's on the move, it seems like he's done better. In the pocket, they're getting some pressure. Zach's... He's he's moving around, rolling out, and he's you know he's able to see the field a little better on the run, and it gives him another option to to run the ball as well. And uh, you know he's finding his open guys. La Cueva hasn't really had much of an answer. They've had uh, some big plays. I think they have uh, six plays of ten plus yards. El Dorado does, so that's one big thing. And for La Cueva, they they seem to be bothered by that bye week. Do, do you buy into that at all? You know what I I, I do. There there's there's some rust coming in. You, know, you haven't played in two weeks. Your your best players hurt. You know it, it's tough. You, all week you probably practice, and you know you keep going against each other, and each other, and you you want to come out and be excited, but it's also hard to get that chemistry with your team to come out and be ready for a game, especially a, an unusual game. You know, at two o'clock on a Friday, it's a little different. But uh, El Dorado had the advantage of they played last week, so they're they're fresh off their win and they're. Uh, riding some momentum, and La Cueva hasn't played since their Thursday night game two weeks ago. Let's go down to the sideline and to Marcus Jaramillo. Marcus? Hey, guys, I just got a report from the El Dorado sideline that Des Ravenel, uh, big-time defensive end for El Dorado, injured his hip yesterday in practice and most likely will not play today. All right, thank you, Marcus.
41-21. Las Cruces leads. Marcus Jaramillo is on the sideline. And Marcus, uh, what's the feeling along the El Dorado bench right now? The El Dorado bench is a little dead right now. The, you know, there's some players trying to keep everybody up, but after giving up two touchdowns here, they're they're a little shot. The, there's a lot more juice going on on the Las Cruces sideline, and you can you can definitely see it now. Okay, thank you, Marcus.